the vehicle, there's been the, the 13 valves everybody's heard about. Um, we, we were able to recover all but four of the valves. Um, and then we've done everything we can on those, and we finally looked and looked at the timeline and looked at where we were and said, hey, we, we've got to go back to the factory. But big picture, there are, um, there are numerous valves in the system. There are, there are 24 oxidation valves. There are 24 fuel valves. And then there are 16 uh, helium valves that pressurize both sides of the system. So there's quite a few valves um, just in the, uh, this portion of the system propulsion system, and um, so the fact that we had an issue with 13 of them was, was significant. Uh, I, I do want to emphasize that uh, these valves, we use these during pad abort, we use these during the OFT-1 mission, and uh, without any incident, and so we really had no reason to suspect any, any uh, issues with the, the valves themselves. Uh, part of the test procedure at the pad is to go through a check out of these valves. So it was not a, uh, a random uh, failure that we found. We, we intentionally go and cycle these valves. And we had actually cycled them, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, before leaving the factory. So we had a good read on the valves when we left the factory. Um, of course, we had gone through um, our initial rollout for launch attempt, which was uh, we had to stand down. Uh, we came back for this launch attempt, and we were going through our nominal checkout for launch preparations when we found this. Um, the prior night, we had been through a storm, and so there were some um, erroneous measurements that we saw on the vehicle, so we were working through those measurements, and it turns out that some of those were related to the valve position indicators on these valves. And so uh, it turns out as we worked ourselves through the fall tree, those were an independent issue. They were not part of the, this, this main issue that we're, we're working through now, but um, it, it was something that uh, we had to work through as well. Um, so let's see. Um, what we're working through right now is the most probable causes that we're looking at is that uh, we're seeing some permeation of uh, the oxidizer, which is NTO, uh, through uh, some of the seals um, in the valve itself. Uh, when that NTO uh, interacts with moisture, and so there was some moisture um, on the, the quote dry side of the valve, and that interaction we believe uh, created some nitric acid, and that nitric acid resulted in some corrosion which resulted in the stiction of those valves. So that is primarily what we're looking at right now as uh, the the uh, most likely cause for the issue. Now, we've got a lot of things on the fault tree, and there's a lot of pieces of that fault tree that interact with each other, so we have to systematically go through and disposition all those items. Uh, but right now, that is our, our, our leading candidate for um, what has caused the issues with the valve. Now, having said that, um, we did get to a position where once we break the, the bond of that nitric acid, um, and we continue to cycle the valves, the valves did cycle reliably. So all the valves that we recovered, um, if we continued to cycle those valves, uh, they worked fine with nominal commands. Uh, so we were getting to a point that um, we were feeling comfortable that with continued cycling of those valves, if we were able to free them all, uh, we would have been in a good uh, operational um, condition. Um, so that's what we were shooting for, but obviously um, with not getting all the valves, uh, we made the decision that um, uh, we were just out of runway and we had to come back to the factory to complete uh, anything else that we need to do going forward. So we will be looking at driving this to root cause uh, before our next flight and ensuring that we have the, the safest vehicle as possible.